We painstakingly studied 150 years of one small town newspaper to make this slice of life documentary. These newspapers not only gave us a little laughter in our bellies, but also a greater perspective and appreciation for life itself and the stories that form the very structure of our reality. So now we're gonna share our favorite 55 folks that we uncovered in these pages. Okay, so I wanted to do my uh, favorite one first. I don't wanna keep uh, the fine audience waiting. No. I found him here in the 1936 issue. Tiny little news bulletin here, but it says, Toronto's $500,000 baby derby drew to a close with the possibility that several mothers would be tied, each claiming to have had nine children in the last decade. Whoa. That's all the info I was going off of. And so I looked into this and it was this guy named Charles Miller who has one of the coolest wills I've ever heard of. He was like a wealthy lawyer, never had kids or anything. And so he had a little fun. The intro to his will says, this will is necessarily uncommon and capricious because I have no dependents or near relations and no duty rests upon me to leave any property at my death. And what I do leave is proof of my folly in gathering and retaining more than I required in my lifetime. The biggest thing in it was that he set up this contest that his entire $500,000 estate, which is like 10 million in today's money. Oh my gosh. He would give that entire estate to the woman who could have the most children in the decade following his death. And the lawyer said, yeah, it's solid. It's a solid will. So they set up the contest. So I think 10 or so families entered and it ended up uh, with four mother, four mothers tied with nine children. That's crazy. 10 years. So they split, they split the 10 million in, in today's terms. So what we did to get a good slice of life throughout all these years is we just looked at the front page of one issue of each year, uh, the same day every year, October 31st. Oh, I forgot to say, I'll put this at the beginning, but uh, so I made up uh, one of my folks. So see if you can catch it when I'm going through these. Okay. I, I think it's hidden pretty good. I don't, I don't know if you'll catch it. 1907, bottom of the page. Uh, this is about a big baby. So this kid at eight months old was 110 pounds. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's not possible. <laughs> I, I wouldn't think so, no. Is now a prodigy and weighs almost as much as his mother. Big if true. Yeah. Oh, here's a pretty well-known person. 1956. President Eisenhower will go on nationwide television and radio tonight to discuss the Middle East crisis. So apparently there was some sort of crisis in the Middle East back then, which is odd. Interesting. 1956, yeah. Don't know what all that's about, but I'm sure they'll figure it out soon. Yeah, I'm sure they'll know what that was. I'm sure they wrapped it up shortly. 1875. Go down a little bit. There's a guy who himself pulling some kids off a train track in that late news, same year. He was riding in a wagon down a street, and he saw these two children lying on the tracks with the train bearing down on them. And he leaped off his wagon to pull the kids off, and then he got run over himself by the train. It's like what you'd see in a movie. Wow. My question is, why were the kids laying on the track? Yeah, oh, they're what... playing on the track, it says. Oh, the pee's kind of hidden. Yeah, maybe they're a little hard of hearing. I wonder when, maybe trains didn't always have the big whistles and stuff, you know? Yeah, but still you'd think you'd hear the... Distracted. Yeah, they must have been in a real interesting game of uh, stick and hoop. Sounds like something uh, you make up a story after to like make it seem better. You know, like he oh, yeah. is actually something you wouldn't want known how he died. But oh, yeah, he saved. Yeah. He is out there saving <laughs> a couple kids. He's probably terribly train. drunk, passed out on the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> a couple kids saw him. What a hero. 1980, wrong leg amputated. So <laughs> the surgeon amputated the wrong leg of this guy. And I thought it was funny down here. The hospital's executive director says there were extenuating circumstances. The patient was very kind, very rational. It was understood that the patient does not want a lawsuit or an insurance settlement. 
<laughs> we talk. It's fine. There's not. There's not going to be none of that. There's not going to be any lawsuits or settlements. He he was very rational. We agree. <laughs> this could happen to anyone. This, there was there was a lot going on at the time. We took the wrong could leg. Either leg. He had a fifty fifty shot, Doc. I don't know how. And it says, however. Newspaper quoted the patient's wife as saying that the family had employed a lawyer because we wanted to know what our rights are. So <laughs> I doubt the hospital got out of that one. My dicks was 1905. This is the bottom of the page. This is about a husband who is too loving. It was a husband who was too loving, led to divorce because he, the lady, the woman claimed that he was, quote, too loving to live with, end quote. And she sued him for divorce. They were married three years ago, and the wife alleges that he still hugs her so frequently and violently as to make her scream. She fears he will injure her permanently. Wow. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> if it's uh, it's like something else going on, but she doesn't want to disgrace him. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. 1878. This one is about a not very nice guy. Not very nice. The king of Dahomey. It's back to uh, sacrificing humans. So, whoa, uh, five hundred. Not what you want to hear out of there. So, just sacrificing Where slaves. Is that? Africa. What in the world? What year is this? Uh, eighteen seventy-eight. Five hundred people in one month. I don't. The Aztecs would have a hard time competing with those numbers. It's like the old uh, Norm Macdonald joke. He like describes someone like this. He, you know, about all the terrible stuff they're doing. The king of Dahomey sacrificed 500 more slaves this this month. This guy was a real jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Go to 1939. Record crowd sees the state husking match. So I guess I'd seen this in a couple other newspapers, but the the Muscatine entry, he's the tallest contestant, <laughs> standing <Wow>. six foot two, <laughs> staggering six foot two. Al- Alvin Roberts of uh, Talisa was the tallest entrant, staggering <laughs> six foot two at the husking competition. I don't know if that helps with husking. <laughs> I don't know, but there's also the, the elder, oldest man there was 43 years of age, oldest man wow. in the derby, trim and gray haired Lee Stodgel. That's so, awesome. Like to see yeah. some results. I would too. Well, if it's like five minutes, how many years you can husk or what? And right next to that, if you look, or just to the right of that, it's talking about Hitler. <laughs> Here we know, go. Just kind of a Hitler warning. <laughs> some yeah. world news and some local news. Well, in all those '40s papers, there was it was all war on the front page. There was there's no non-war yeah. articles. It's all war updates. 1994 issue. This is Francisco Martin Duran. This guy opened fire on the Clinton White House. So this Sunday, apparently Clinton was uh, watching NFL here and didn't hear any of it. <laughs> didn't hear anything going on until after the fact. In his trial, he, he tried pleading not guilty for insanity. So he claimed he was trying to save the world by destroying an alien mist connected by an umbilical cord to an alien in the Colorado mountains. Everyone was like, "No, you're just, you're just saying that. You're not, you're not insane. You know, you're just trying to get off." Yeah. Apparently, it's a pretty easy prosecution. Uh, prosecutors said he was faking insanity, and called more than sixty witnesses to testify that Duran hated government in general, <laughs> and President Clinton in particular. Uh, so. As you were shooting, you said, I am in clear conscience. <laughs> kind of. I'll read this from an article I found about the trial. During their investigation, Secret Service agents impounded his brown pickup near the White House and found one of the rifles he had purchased en route to Washington, several boxes of ammunition, a nerve gas antidote, a handwritten document with the heading Last Will and Words, an order form for the book Hitman, they also found a number of items that clearly revealed his intention to assassinate Clinton, <laughs> including a road atlas on which he had written, kill the prez, <laughs> and a cover torn from a telephone book that bore a picture of President Clinton with a circle drawn around his head and an X on his face. <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious. My next ones are 1883. The famous female attorney, Belva Lockwood, has been caught with the 
gang of pension swindlers and suspended from practice. It is to be regretted that her sex must suffer because of her disgrace. She has been honored and encouraged, but her actions have been closely watched by those who would debar women from the profession she entered. This should have made Miss Lockwood too careful in her conduct to engage in such transactions as are charged, and more is the pity it is not the first time we believe this her, that her professional reputation has been assailed. Dang. Disgrace to her sex. So this lady, I looked her up a little bit. She's one of the first female lawyers ever and um, was the first female to appear on ballot for president the next year, 1884, and ran again in 88. Despite the disgrace, got over that. Just despite the disgrace <laughs> to her sex. Sounds like a hit piece. Yeah. Making too many waves. <laughs> I know. You'd think she'd have been more careful. Okay, mine's 1878. Stick with the old ones here. Okay, murder trial. So this is the trial of Mrs. Lorena Alexander. She uh, killed her husband, who went by Stuttering Jack, with... Uh, ether or chloroform murdered with chloroform and then she put his body in a barrel and tried to sell it to a doctor as a cadaver or something but that didn't work so then she uh just threw it in a ravine could you just sell dead bodies back then well apparently not at least not to dr sanford maybe some other doctors would take it under the table not ask any questions (laughs) uh mine is 1885 it's about Henry F. Bacon, Hank Bacon. Yeah, he took a dose of sarsaparilla, which cured his rheumatism right up. Found no relief till he took his hood sarsaparilla. Dang. Only hoods, though. Only hoods. Don't mess with any of those other sarsaparillas. This is 1882. D. Lang, a Dubuque teamster, fell asleep while driving home the other night and was thrown out of the wagon and fatally injured. So this guy fell asleep driving his wagon we've all been there mine's 1887 jay gould left side midway did jay gould take a sea voyage to escape the ire of the anarchist i had no idea what it was i looked the guy up the only thing i could really find was that he had he was in the american yacht club and he had a yacht named the atlanta that was built for him so this is more of a question i (laughs) Maybe anyone anyone watching can help out. There's an open-ended question. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, my next one is 2010, and it's this guy wearing <laughs> this cool suit in a volleyball game. So I'm not sure who won the, the volleyball match, but... Uh, he, he'd won, I'd say. 1889. 1889, a number. Another summer. Bottom of the page... Lewis Andrews lived to be 109 years young. That had to be unheard of in 1889. 1886. Okay, this one is uh, Mrs. Jane. So Mrs. Jane and Mr. Kissinger of Wilton are expected to visit their sister tomorrow. Sounded exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little news bulletin. Just a friendly get-together. Mrs. Watkins is visiting her brother in Davenport. Mr. and Mrs. Brogan are visiting with relatives in the country today. So, <laughs> What year was this? 1886. Yeah, that's awesome. Saturday Evening Journal. Just kind of what's going on around town. That's what's happening. <laughs> Got people visiting. <laughs> Still haven't spotted the fake one yet. Have you done it yet? I don't know. Have I? I don't know. I was thinking about that. I. No, I haven't yet. My next one's 1891. Uh, Upper left. Dies of fright. So this guy, George Smith, he was an African-American guy who was supposed to have been strangled to death by a mob. He died of, they said, the claim was that he died of fright. Um, At least that's what the coroner claimed. Dr. Allison made the post-mortem examination of Smith's body, and while there were 16 wounds and bruises on the head and his back was broken in three places, the doctor testified that the contracted condition of the heart and the appearances indicated that death resulted from some great mental emotion, and he was satisfied that Smith died of fright. Frightened of being beaten to death? (laughs) 
guess as he was getting beaten to death, it sounds like this was the coroner who said that. wonder if that's a legal loophole, like you can't press charges if it officially died of fright or something, you know? I don't know. That's just, I, I read that. I couldn't believe it. But This one is from 1930. Oh, corn husking contest. There we go. Not to be confused with uh, the corn husking contest you went over. So this one is uh, Isaac Abbott Jr. He was either the ninth or 10th contestant to enter. So uh, he helped get the total entrance up to 10. But they did decide... They had to postpone the contest one day because there was a contest in a nearby town that would have uh, <laughs> that would have been a conflict. So, it, a lot it of was, the Huskers were a lot, a lot of the Huskers the nearby town too were committed to both, so they had to move it to Tuesday. But uh, <laughs> they are going to have decent numbers. They're up to ten as of nine o'clock this morning. So, eighteen ninety seven, um, Iowa News. Uh, mine's about a lady who sued for a hundred dollars. Miss Lottie Thomas of Webster City has sued Constable Little for $100 damages for killing her dog. The main wow. reason I found that interesting is I didn't know you could sue for as little as $100. Also have right below that, Old Sandvik, a Norwegian age 22. He was killed um, in a mine near Boone on the 27th. A piece of coal fell from the roof and hit him in the head, killed him instantly. Oh, that's good. The main it's instant. Yeah, the main thing was he was 22, and his name was Old Sandvik. Sounds like a 90-year-old. <laughs> oh, that's just Old Sandvik. Oh. Well, he'd probably been working in the mine since he was 12, so. <laughs> yeah, he probably, probably looked pretty old. Probably it's like been that wor- guy on Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> old Gus. I hated it when they called me that when I was young. And just for the record, I never, ever liked being called Old Gus. I didn't understand it when I was in my 20s, and I sure hate it now. My next one's 1899. British news most of the way down. <laughs> Escape from the sheriff. So this guy, Arthur Wolf, he was wanted there for seduction, and he escaped, captured from the sheriff. I didn't know what, uh, I couldn't find anything about what that would mean to be wanted for seduction. Hmm, like trying to induce adultery? I guess, yeah, I don't know. I mean, seducer. Usually it's like um, someone who acted on whatever, not just tried to get yeah. something to happen. That's what it makes it seem like anyways. Couldn't seduce the sheriff, though. Had to escape. No, evidently not. It's Probably tried. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't work. Might be why he escaped. Seduced him into letting him escape. 1976. Galileo. So this is a bit of uh, embarrassment for Galileo, apparently. He would say, you know, if you take a rubber ball and a shot put on the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you know, they're supposed to both hit the ground at the same time, even though Mm -hmm. one's a lot lighter. But a group of physicists tried it, and they said it doesn't work. So they're pretty pretty proud of themselves for proving Galileo wrong. They were, they were quick to add that Galileo's law is valid and the experiment would work in a vacuum, but in normal conditions on Earth, uh, theoretical laws of physics are thrown off by air resistance. Suck it, Galileo. Suck on that, Galileo. I don't know what they were getting at. Like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> air resistance is a they, thing. They should have dropped an apple and they could have hit, mm. hit a new... Uh, Somebody out the head, new eyes and yeah. type. No, you just drop an apple on someone and then wait, and then he doesn't turn out to be a famous scientist. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> myth busted. I don't see how you're going to have a fake one. You don't think any of them I've done so far have been fake? I mean, I can look at the paper. Well, I'll just see once we're done. Okay. 1909. This guy, P. E. Ermston. Unique character and hermit watch tinker dies in flames. So he uh, he was just like this hermit guy who lived on evidently thirty cents a week, which I don't know what that comes to today in nineteen oh nine. He would buy goods and just give them away. Very well educated guy. The um, professors of astrology would seek him out for his knowledge. Um, he was just like a watch tinker. Died alone in his house. Burnt up. 
No one knows what the fire came from. or He was tired of living. Yeah, one of the most unique characters that ever lived in whatever county. 1884. Uh, this isn't any specific person. It's just a working man. I was dragged down with debt, poverty, and suffering for years caused by a sick family and large bills for doctoring. I was completely discouraged until one year ago by the advice of my pastor. I commenced using hop bitters, and in one month we were all well, and none of us have been sick a day since. And I want to say to all poor men, you can keep your families well for a year with hop bitters for less than one doctor's visit will cost. I know it. None genuine without a bunch of green hops on the white label. Shun all the vile, poisonous stuff with hop or hops in their name. Only genuine hop bitters will cure your poverty and sickness. I like to quote where it just, at the end, it just says, a working man. A working man. Just a, a reasonable guy you can trust. It's not a working man. It's a working man. Maybe it's a working man. It's his name. Oh, yeah. Could be. <laughs> Alfred working <man. laughs> There's tons of that kind of stuff, like uh, for these ads, just these fake testimonials. 1881. This I made a note to myself to do, to do more research, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> late news, three quarters of the way down. Um, somebody paddling the Yellowstone. I don't know what this is about. Oh, yeah. This guy was in one of my issues. I didn't have him down as one of mine, but what he did, because at this point he was on this big journey down from Yellowstone all the way to St. Louis, I think, floating down the river. Yeah, he paddled 2,500 miles. Yeah. He lost uh, 40 pounds in 47 days. Probably not eating a lot. He would wear this rubber suit. It's like an immersion suit. So, like, that's why he would do all these things to publicize this suit. Because he, oh, he was just like, he, did. he was like, didn't have a boat, I don't think. He was just like actually paddling oh, down the really? river. He had like a small... A small boat for his supplies he would tow behind him. But that's what it was. He was, yeah, he was just going down the river in this rubber rubber suit, kind of like a a dry suit today. Um, 1925, upper right, Red Grange had 226 yards and 16 attempts in the first half. The whole, that whole thing is about him. Crowd's astonished. Yeah, um, so I looked him up a little bit. He went on to play in the NFL and he was an actor at some point. But during the summer months while he was in the NFL, he was an ice toter in his hometown, tow ice around to various towns to make make some ends meet. But evidently, he's quite a football player. This one's from 2014. Walker arrested in Railroad Park. So this was some sort of uh, YouTube prankster, apparently, who was uh, arrested for his actions. Um, apparently he would go around the country, uh, tasing people of short stature in different Whoa. parks. Uh, he's uploaded seven past videos in which he tases persons of short stature in parks in various cities across the United States. So yeah, that one was odd. I'm going to say that's the fake one. You think this is the fake one? Yeah, that's my guess. What, what about this seems fake? But yeah, you're right. You got me. Mine's 1929, bottom of the page. Italian scientist discovers serum. So this guy in the article, it says he discovered the serum believed to cure and prevent measles. Um, But the virus wouldn't be isolated until the 50s and the vaccine was created in the 60s. So evidently it didn't work out. Didn't work. 1951. Um, This is Leopold Stokowski, bottom of the page. So this guy was a, uh, he was married three times. He was a conductor or something or what a maestro. He's 69 at the time and his wife is 27. So he's married to some very rich ladies. First was a piano player, Olga Samarov, which I don't know. She, I don't know if she was or what, but the second lady was Evangeline Love Brewster Johnson of the Johnson and Johnson company. Whoa. And uh, this one is Gloria Vanderbilt of the Vanderbilt family. And he's 69. She was 27. Wow. So, yeah, it was just kind of crazy. That's odd. And, like, she'd be yeah. rich already, so she wouldn't just be... Marrying him for after his money. His money. Yeah. It's kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, he's not Michael Jordan. He's a conductor. 
I looked him up too. I mean, you Google him. He's not like the most classically attractive guy in the world, especially at 69. Yeah. So it's a, it was kind of an odd. To look into that more. 1906. Oh, you had one kind of like this. So you had a 109. But this doesn't quite top that. This guy died at 106. He was never N- ill. Never was ill. Michael Burke, Newark, Ohio. He was kicked by a horse. That's how he died. Didn't die of sickness. He didn't die of old age. Maybe. I mean, maybe. Wouldn't have killed him in his younger years, but... Yeah, that's impressive. Once a railway contractor, uh, never knew a sick day. Um, 1955. William Woodward Jr. Oh, the, oh, it's the, they're the big game hunter. Yeah, go, go up. It's a long article. Go up there. It's the wife kills her this millionaire. One? Yeah, yeah, that social life. Okay. So these people um she was like they were socialites he's a millionaire and there was a prowler what it says in the thing a prowler around and so they were sleeping with guns by their bed and the husband had told the wife if you see anything shoot first ask questions later and she shot him in the middle of the night he was walking around the house yeah i called it a accident obviously it was what the claim was she was Cleared later by the grand jury, but she was kind of her reputation was tarnished a little bit because some people thought she, yeah, well, obviously, I mean, he's a millionaire, you know, I mean, you can, yeah, draw the conclusions, but I got 1890. Oh, this is three, three and one. See if the judges allow it, but Mm. Sherman Allen, Doc Allen, and John W. Murphy, charged with burglary, sawed their way out of the Newton, Illinois jail Thursday. And that was their second escape. Whoa. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. They got got away for a second time. There's nothing cool about attempting to avert justice. 1957. Um, this is the polite robber. So this guy walks in. He robbed uh, four pints of a specific blood type. He told the lady, well, I won't hurt you, my dear, or whatever. Just don't be frightened. Do what I tell you. So the lady who was behind the counter or whatever said he's very calm and sweet. Uh, but he had a pistol, and he wanted uh, type O negative, like to have five units of type O negative. So there are only four pints of such blood. He said he'd take them, and he asked for the hookups or whatever, the tubes they need and needles, and walked away. Uh, 1963, upper right, General Paul Harkins. He was America's top military commander in South Vietnam. Um, he said today that at least a thousand of the 15,000 American troops in Vietnam will be on their way home within two months. Harkins told the Stars and Stripes victory and the sense it would apply to this kind of war is just months away. The end of the war is in sight. Nice. This was uh, 1963. It's good news. Yeah, it's great news. <laughs> have to check the next year's 64, yeah, 65. And, well, surely, surely by 65. What do you say? A few months? 1890. Uh, Roger Martin. It's another guy who got past 100, but I thought it was cool. It said he's born in 1789. So, Whoa. that was wild because this is the, yeah, the 1890 issue. So, start, start stretching back to the revolution yeah. almost. Uh, mine's 1967. Oswald's wife. Upper right, I think it's widow. Oswald. His wife uh, sued the United States for a half a million dollars for compensation for the seizure of his personal effects. I just didn't know that she sued the government. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I don't know what all they seized. Probably about everything they could. Oh, yeah. Seized a lot of people, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, We should get to the bottom of that some episode. Probably wouldn't take long. The Kennedy yeah, plot? Just, yeah, just go figure out what happened there right quick. I don't know if anyone's in looked minutes. into it I don't, much yeah, before. No one would probably think anyone would even watch that. Yeah, That'd be probably, so quick. It'd take, what, two minutes, three minutes? Yeah. Well, it probably wouldn't be much interest in it or someone would have uh, figured it out by now. Yeah, someone would have looked into that by now. Well, I guess Oswald killed him. I guess they did figure it out. Maybe that's why. Oh, so, yeah. The Warren Commission checked it out. Yeah. Real thoroughly, I'm sure. I'm sure they didn't leave a single stone unturned. 
Well, it was a government commission, was it not? <laughs> was it not? <laughs> what uh, incentive would they have to? <laughs> what? To go, You're telling to not do me your own job. <laughs> 1954. This is pretty Mrs. Ruth Lower, a teenage blonde, uh, was sentenced to serve two to four years in a penitentiary because she smuggled a hacksaw to prisoners so they could escape. So pretty Mrs. Ruth Lower says, the boys in there told me they wanted the blade to saw soup bones. I didn't know they were going to try to get out. How would I know that? How would I know that? Anyways, uh, she did not get away with it. It seemed a little steep, two to four years. Yeah, that is. But they must have known she knew what she was doing. Can't even give a... Help out a poor prisoner in need by giving him something to saw his soup bones. Can't even give a poor prisoner a firearm to <laughs> hunt his own game with. What kind of country do we live in? 1923. Bottom of the page. Oh, yeah. Old Ed Howe. This is a guy. He went to visit New York and wasn't very impressed. Old Ed Howe. At the Atchison Globe. It had his first look at New York and his heart did not skip a beat. Describing his impressions today. He said he couldn't see a great deal of difference between the metropolis and his own Kansas home. He seemed to see the city through Atchison eyes. Broadway flappers could not draw a glance from him. He said, we have them in Atchison too, and they drink bootleg too. People he met on surface cars talked with him friendly like, just as they do in Atchison. (laughs) That's awesome. Old Ed Howe. Old Ed Howe. That's probably 22. (laughs) Yeah, it's 19. (laughs) 